In this video I'm gonna tell you which ISO to use on your Lumix camera for the best results. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto. I'm a photographer and a Lumix ambassador. And in this video I'm gonna tell you which ISO to use on your Lumix camera for the best results. As you probably know, you have three ways to control the exposure on your camera. You have your aperture and your shutter speed. And uh, with those two, you can control the actual amount of light that enters the camera. Then you have the ISO control that you can also use to adjust the exposure or the brightness of the picture. But the ISO does not control the amount of light that enters the camera. The ISO only amplifies the signal that comes from the sensor after the picture has already been taken. So the ISO does not change the sensitivity of the sensor or it does not um, change the amount of light that enters the camera. The ISO only amplifies the signal that comes from the sensor after the picture has already been taken. And because of that, there are two ways to use the ISO for the best results. And in this video, I'm going to find out which way to use in which situation for the absolutely best image quality results. But I'd also like to uh, point out that this only applies to raw pictures. If you shoot JPEGs, you should always use the ISO control on your camera uh, accordingly for the best results. But for the raw shooter, there are two ways. The first is the conventional way that you set the ISO on your camera according uh, to the ambient light and uh, take your pictures and be happy. And the other way is to leave the ISO at certain value and underexpose your pictures up to four stops and then adjust the exposure in post to get the correct exposure or the correct brightness for your picture. And either way can uh, give you excellent results depending on the situation where you are. And I made tests with four different Lumix cameras. And I'm gonna show you my results. And after my results, I'm gonna share my opinion which ISO method to use in which situation. The cameras that I used were the Lumix G9, GX9 and G90, and then the full frame Lumix S1. And in these tests, I first took a series of pictures at different ISO values so that the exposure was correct straight out of camera. Then I took another series of pictures where I underexposed my pictures by two, three and four stops. And then in post, I increased the exposure so that it, uh, I got the same exposure as um, I got in camera. Let me show you my uh, test pictures so you can better maybe understand what I'm trying to explain here. And first I'd like to show you my Micro Four Thirds results. And I'm only going to show you the Lumix G90 pictures here because the G90 and the GX9 were pretty much uh, identical. And the G9 was slightly different and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later in this video. But anyway, here is the first uh, uh, pair of pictures and the other one is shot at ISO 800 and the other one is shot at ISO 200. And uh, that ISO 200 picture I pushed two stops in post. And as you can see, when you uh, look at the noise levels in these both pictures, they are pretty much identical. And the next pair of pictures is again another one shot at ISO 200 and another one shot at ISO 1600. And uh, the ISO 200 picture has been pushed three stops in post. And also in these pictures, it looks pretty similar 
uh, the noise levels and everything on bo in both pictures. Not uh, any significant difference. And the next picture is um, shot at ISO 3200 and again at ISO 200 and the ISO 200 picture has been pushed by uh, four stops in post. And in this pair of pictures uh, the ISO 3200 picture looks a little bit cleaner to me and it looks like the three stops is pretty much the limit for 20 megapixel uh, Bluemix cameras. I wouldn't push it more than that. And these next pictures are from the Lumix S1. And with the S1 I started from uh, ISO 800 because below that there is hardly any noise visible in the pictures anyway. And this, in this first pair of pictures the other one is shot at ISO 3200 and the other one at the ISO 800 and that picture I pushed uh, uh, two stops in post. And as you can see uh, the noise levels look pretty much identical in both pictures. And then in the next pair uh, the other one is shot at ISO 6400 and the other one at 800 which has been pushed by three stops in post. And also in this uh, pair the noise levels look really almost like identical. And in the next pair of pictures the other one is shot at ISO 12800 and the other one at ISO 800 and uh, pushed uh, four stops in post. And also in this picture I think the results are pretty much identical. I can't see any significant difference. But I notice that the highlight roll-off is slightly better looking in those pictures that I shot at lower ISO and pushed in post. And that is true for both uh, the Lumix G90 and the S1. And then about the Lumix G9. And I have heard that the Lumix G9 pictures can suffer from magenta color cost if you push the exposure a lot. I've never really experienced it in any kind of real life shooting situations but in these tests I could really see that. And it seems that if you push the exposure by more than two stops then you start to see this magenta color cast which is really really difficult to get rid of. I don't think it's a big real world problem uh, because I think it's relatively easy to get the exposure within that you know two stop tolerance but I would not recommend you to push uh, a Lumix G9 raw pictures uh, in post uh, by more than two stops. And I find it really interesting that those two other 20 megapixel micro four thirds cameras that I also tested here they don't seem to suffer from that same magenta color cast even if I push their raw exposures or raw files in post by four stops. Before I share my conclusion let's take a look at one more picture that is supposed to look more like a real life photograph than a test target. And the photo is here. It's a photo of my messy desk. These pictures are from the Lumix S1 camera and this first picture is my in-camera correct exposure that I shot at ISO 6400. This photo is supposed to simulate a typical low-light scene that has some bright lights in the scene. Like a, a typical a nighttime cityscape or something similar. The contrast in this picture is really high. The highlight in the lamp is uh, several stops brighter than the shadow areas in this picture. And of course in this kind of situation the correct exposure is always some kind of a compromise. And here I wanted to do it like this so that I can at least have some sort of shadow detail in my picture. But if I'd like to also show some highlight detail it's not possible in this particular uh, 
exposure because the highlights are way too overexposed and I can't uh, do anything about it no matter how much I pull back the exposure there is no detail visible in the highlights. And here is my other exposure that I made at ISO 800. All the other exposure values are the same. And as you can see it's pretty dark but when I push the exposure in post by three stops, it looks exactly like my ISO 6400 picture. But in this picture I can pull back the highlights and I can even read the numbers on the inside of the small lamp on the table. And I think the overall tonality in this picture is much nicer than in the first picture. And someone is going to ask, why did you use such a high ISO value for a scene like that? And my answer is, I needed f11 for the depth of field and I needed 1 40th of a second not to get excessive motion blur if some moving thing uh, would happen to enter my scene when I take the picture. But if you have a tripod and you don't mind about some motion blur or even a lot of motion blur, then of course a lower ISO value would do just fine. And now my final conclusion on this one. And remember this is only my opinion, not a universal fact by no means. And my recommendation is, not surprisingly, that you should always select the lowest possible ISO for the situation. But if you, for whatever reason, need higher ISO values, use the ISO control on your camera and try to get your exposure approximately right in camera. I think it's easier that way because then you can see what you get and it's easier to work like that, in my opinion. However, if you have a really high contrast scene and you absolutely have to uh, preserve all the highlight details, then by all means expose for the highlights and let the rest of the scene go as dark as it goes and then fix it in post. You will get some shadow noise in your picture, but then again you will preserve all the, those highlight details. Modern cameras are quite good and flexible when it comes to the sensor performance and raw file flexibility. But sometimes you just have to sacrifice either shadow or highlight detail uh, if you want to capture your picture in one shot. You can of course use HDR and other tricks, but if that is not possible, then you just have to make uh, a choice between a shadow or highlight in some situations. And if your camera was not included in this video, please experiment and do your own test. It's fairly simple to do the basic underexposure test and see how your camera performs. And I would also like to hear your opinion on this. Would you rather push the exposure in post or get your exposure right in camera? What kind of experiences you have and what kind of preferences you have? Please leave a comment down below and let me know. And if you like my content and like this channel, please remember to subscribe and hit the bell right there so you'll get a notification every time I post new content. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.